Do you know, I've scoured this store from top to bottom. Can I find a sidewinding thermal body belt? Can I? Buffalo. <laughs> what did you want one for? Excuse me, I think you'll find there's spam on that. <laughs> that jippy kidney. Flared up. Oh, I'll say it's like being continually poked. Can you imagine that? No. <laughs> Dr. Brewster said if I don't keep it lagged for the winter, I could be spending a penny every 20 minutes come March. <laughs> Can't they operate? Well, I haven't time to go in. I'm on the phone night and day about that carpet. What's the soup, dear? <laughs> country vegetable. What country? Taiwan. Is <laughs> that steak? I would doubt it. Probably some poor beast that came a cropper at Beecher's Brook. <laughs> And I had a huge to-do and a hoo-ha at the hairdressers. What about those Dublin prawns? Never touch prawns. Do you know they hang around sewage outlet pipes, treading water with their mouths open? <laughs> they love it! So anyway, I'm at Maison Reels. Aren't prawns in aphrodisia? Well, I wouldn't put it past them. <laughs> so, I'm at Reels, waiting to be shampooed. Flicking through a woman's weekly. Lovely piece on Alma Cogan. Sorry. What's the hold up here, dear? We're waiting for fresh collie. Fresh? Might as well wait for Maurice Chevalier. <laughs> so, I'm pulled into the cubicle. Oh, this is ridiculous. Tell I thrust by, I'm a diabetic. <laughs> anyway, in comes Rene. She must be getting on. Well, this is the trouble, you see. She leans too far forward with a sponge roll as she topples out of a walking frame. <laughs> and you really have to shout up. I mean, I don't particularly want the whole world knowing I'm not a natural conquer. <laughs> don't have the gatto. Just saw her scratching her armpit with the cake slice. <laughs> and Reen is very set in her ways, style-wise. I don't mind. I'm a great admirer of Phyllis Calvert. Mm. <laughs> but, uh, so, why hence the hoo-ha? Well, I decided to go a shade mad, it being the smoked meat purveyors Buffy and Mingle at the weekend. Could we get by, please? We're not having a sweet. Mm, very wise with those hips. <laughs> so, I said, skip the conquer, Rene. I'll have burnished beech nut and a heck with it. Yeah. Well, you know, she's colourblind, and they've only a gas mantle in the back. Colourblind? tell red from blue. She once dotted into a brothel thinking it was a police station. <laughs> you and Tony? Yeah? That he was like having a sort of a problem in bed. I couldn't get him before because a bloke and he comes in on a Thursday. <laughs> what are they? Viagra. They're really hard to get. You know what they are? Oh yeah, they had one Richard and Judy. They gave them to three couples, didn't they, and sent them to an hotel. The one it didn't work. And one just went red in the face. And one it worked before he got to the bedroom and he had an orgasm in a revolving door. How's your buttocks doing, Bren, for our holiday? Hey? Got a bikini yet? Oh, I'm not getting a bikini. Oh, Bren, it's the year of the midriff. We're going to Spain, man. Let's see that belly button. Ha, you'll be lucky. I haven't seen it since about 1972. <laughs> Can I tell you who I am? I'm Pamela Patricia, but they call me Pam. I don't say who, I don't say whom I never use the toilet, just the smallest room I don't say gay, I still say queer I think that Mussolini had the right idea <laughs> Got engaged in 62 Got married in the April in a nice pale blue It all turned sour to say the least I was stuck in Abigaili with a sex-crazed beast <laughs> A wedding night I heard a cough There was Harold in the doorway with his jammers off I said, now look, I must be blunt I couldn't give a beggar on the whole sex front Not me, not my scene I prefer a game of rummy and an oval teen <laughs> Harold, dear, now do get dressed I've seen one in a book and I was not impressed <laughs> Once divorced, I lived alone Then I chummed up with a woman by the name of Joan She moved in, she seemed quite nice Wore army boots and braces, but I didn't think twice <laughs> Then one night she seemed upset I said, are you not happy in my maisonette? She drained her rum and baby sham Ran her fingers through her crew cut Said, I love you, Pam <laughs> 
She said, please come upstairs with me. Let me show you just how wonderful a love can be. I said, all right, but don't be late. There's a thing by Alan Bennett on at half past eight. <laughs> so up we go, and off she went. But the only thing that happened was my specs got bent. <laughs> Not me, how I feel. I'd rather have a coffee and a wagon wheel. <laughs> Then last year, to beat the blues, I booked myself a cabin on a ten-day cruise. So much to do, so much to see, with a load of single women who look just like me. Then one night I clicked like that with a bachelor called Billy in a golfing hat. We were so happy, hand in hand, listening to a lecture on the prostate gland. I told him sex had been no go. He took it as a challenge, and we went below. We kissed and hugged without delay. He tried to take my rain hood off. I said no way. I bet you ten whole pounds. I bet you have an orgasm while I'm around. He got stuck in. He really tried, but I only felt a tremor down my left hand side. <laughs> The Custard TV Live, brought to your friends by the CustardTV.com. Um, and uh, I'm joined, as always, by Matt in the North. Hello. And I'm Gary, uh, the bloke from down south, who fills in for Luke. I suppose, I suppose we ought to t touch on this. We're going to touch a bit about Victoria Wood in the news, but we just found out the Prince has died as well. Hmm. Um, can, we, can we find Bruce Springsteen and wrap him in cotton wool or something? And Bruce Forsyth. And Bruce Forsyth. I'm getting very worried. I mean, the quick... The Queen's been outside all day with her birthday. I'm a bit worried about her. Yeah, all the Bruces. Yeah, Bruce, Bruce, um, and the Queen. Uh, Kate Bush. So kind of. Yeah. Uh, and Gaza. Can we just make sure those people <laughs> are okay? No, because he's, he's been ill. I'm like, no, I, I can't have Gaza dying this year. That would just do me in. And we didn't even mention uh, Denise from this morning. Yeah, I know. So, yes, you join us at a very uh, a difficult time in the uh, podcast world. As I say, mentioned that we are sponsored by thecustardtv.com. Uh, oh, sponsored? Well, you know, hosted, I don't know, this is episode 136, Fact Fans. Uh, and yeah, um, it's annoying Luke's not here, because I had another round of uh, well, we, Gary. Well, we can, we can do it, and if I don't get, have you got three questions? Yeah. If I don't get two out of the three, then he gets the point. All right. We'll do it that way. So yes, they're a bit harder this week. So uh, news: uh, Gary goes west, featuring Matt, previews and the quiz. Uh, Gary versus Luke at the end. Right, uh, <laughs> the news first and foremost: uh, the Durrells has been renewed for series two. This is a very successful ITV drama, currently showing on Sunday nights, featuring Healy Hawes. Hawes. Thank you. I was going to say Kelsey Hawes. That's not right at all. <laughs> Quite unusual for an ITV drama to get recommissioned during its mm. run. So that's. Um, this is sort of light and frothy, but Keely Hawes, you know, is a reliable lead. So. Yeah, and I think I think it's been well received. Certainly, a lot of tweets and and, and, and Facebook messages I've seen amongst friends and stuff. So, uh, this has been good. The new Doctor Who companion is announced this Saturday. Some very cryptic tweets going out. Of... Are they doing a TV special or anything like they did I, when they announced? Oh gosh, I can hope. Well, no, because that was about the Doctor. That's slightly different, and we can only hope that. Because remember the live link up with half of One Direction, mm. um, that was. Let's hope it's not any of One Direction. Gosh, yeah. I mean, I'm. I think it will be a man. Been going on about this, Ray. Well, look, this is where you. This is where you mentioned the Brigadier again, isn't it? Well, that, no, no, I'm not going to mention him. No, I'm just going to say that. I mean, also as well, when when Doctor Who first started, Peter Pur was it Peter? Yeah, Peter Purvis was a. Um, From out of Blue Peter. Yeah, he was one of the Doctor's first. Is he still alive? No, and neither is John Noakes or Shep. So don't go there either. Um... Yvette Fielding. You, Yvette, someone find Yvette Fielding. Gosh, damn me, the number. You're wrong, because Peter Purvis is still alive. You're joking. Uh, he's 77. No, he's John, no John Noakes is dead, though, isn't he? He went missing in Spain, I remember. Yeah, didn't he? Yeah, you're right. No, he's still alive, 82. Yeah, mate. Still, still going. Yeah. And, and Valerie Singleton as well, so it's someone... Well, whoever it is going around killing these celebrities, you leave Blue Peter alone. As we mentioned earlier as well, that Victoria Wood sadly passed away earlier this week. It's a shame Luke's not on, because I did actually speak to him last night. Oh, right. He was talking about how this quite shook him, because he actually did... Well, me and him have both met Victoria Wood at various... Oh, really? 
and I think his was the Sky Arts Awards, but he actually had a conversation with Victoria Wood. I think she, if if I'm honest, I think she held his drink, obviously, and he, they, they got talking and things like he that. He stole his drink, is what he's trying to say. It shook him, and it shook me a little bit as well. I saw her at that, um, at that day we sang, it was called. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, musical that was on the Christmas before last, mm. and... Uh, she was sitting behind me and just sort of talking during various bits and it was almost like having a director's commentary. I think that we have lost a real sort of talent from no TV and comedy and everything like that. She, you know, she distilled Britishness as, as much as sort of, as Luke played those clips of Ronnie Corbett mm. the other she sort of had a, a, more of a British... She was thing. definitely very, very British. I mean, very kind of what's um, called Radio 4 and... Humour with pathos, yes. and there was always light and shade to everything she did. I mean, Dinner Ladies was really good. I I like Dinner Ladies. I, I I must admit I shouldn't have done because the premise of it is blooming awful. But actually, she was so good at kind of as you yeah. say, gentle humour that just couldn't make you just made you feel happy. More recent years, as I say, we had that day we sang, and also um, Eric and Ernie. Did, she did you do Victoria it. Wood on tea or something? I seem to remember because today is National yeah. National yeah, Tea Day. Remember. And she did a whole programme on tea. And she also last year was on the Bake Off. Oh, well, yeah. Day. But it just seems like every week we're talking about someone dying. I know. Between, it, between Ronnie Corbett and Paul Daniels and, and Victoria Woods. Terry Wogan and David Wogan. Bowie and everything. Yeah, it's uh, and as you say, it's all people that are very familiar. Um, Am I going west? Yeah, uh, in a slight <laughs> twist to the normal way we do things. Uh, Matt, can you go west, please? Uh, yeah, OK. Play the music. <laughs> I always wanted to say yeah, that. Yeah, The big story, I suppose, here is that uh, HBO have renewed several of their massive shows. No surprise that Game of Thrones has been renewed. Yeah. Uh, Veep, which Luke's a big fan of. The, um, Me too. Sort of comedy set. Is she president now? She's currently president, but in the middle of a presidential race. She was only made president because the president died. Okay. And now she's being she's in the middle of an, a re-election. And then right at the end of the last series, the Hugh Laurie character put himself forward as presidential candidate. And it's, you know... All... And it became an arms dealer and it all went to Yeah, work. exactly. Other renewals, uh, Fear the Walking Dead, which has been renewed for season three. And uh, Gary's favourite, the Shannara Rara Chronicles, yep. which has been renewed on MTV. And also uh, Mr. Robot season two starts... Uh, in, is that on Amazon? Yeah, it, it, well, no, it's going to be on the USA Network in America on the 13th of July, and then we get it the next day on Amazon okay. Prime. And now Gary's got a couple of reviews for us. Uh, do you want to start with uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt? Yes. Now, I don't think you watched Series 1, did you? I watched, like, the first couple of episodes, but it didn't really grab me in the way it has other people. Okay, well, it's, it certainly grabbed Luke and I. That This was just such a wonderful comedy. Kimmy Schmidt is a character who spent... 15 years in a bunker uh, as part of a cult guy that said the world was going to end and they were surviving. And the, the whole story is her kind of coming out of that, moving to New York, moving in with a, uh, a gay guy and her landlady. And it kind of, it was very, very funny in the sense that you got to see the world through someone who had been locked away for 15 years. Essentially 13, but if they did that as a comedy. Well, also like the Goldbergs in that sense, that all the references were from that era. In the first series, it was very much about her kind of redemption story. So it ended with her confronting the guy that ran the cult in court. This second series is more about her life now in New York. But I've watched about six out of the 13 that are on there. And I still think it's good. It, the, the one thing that I think is missing is that there isn't really a central plot like there was last year keeping it going. You've got lots of people coming back from series one, lots of new characters as well, but there's no kind of like redemption story. There's no. It's all quite incidental. Yeah, and, and a lot of people have said that they feel like the character of Kimmy is kind of almost a now a supporting actress rather than the lead actress. Although, it, okay. you know, because it's. The, the majority of storylines are about the people around her. Uh, her boss, Jane Krakowski, from 30 Rock, which was where Tina Fey, who, who wrote it, they their lead there. And uh, Ali McBeal. Who, uh... Yeah, I still think it's very good. I think it's Ellen... Is it Ellie Kemper? Yeah, well done. Thank you. She's <laughs> brilliant, because you believe her role. You don't think she's playing that character. You believe she is that character. So she's very, very good. It's, you know, all been released on Netflix in one go, and I think it's probably high on a lot of people's binge list at the moment. I mean, it's only it's only 30 minutes, very accessible, 
uh, to, to watch. So, yeah, I mean, I... I...